Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to convert a VirtualBox VM so you could run it inside of VMware Workstation. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert the VDI disk file to a VMDK and that way we can load it on a virtual machine in Workstation. So you can do this via the command line if you're into that kind of thing. So we have a video on that if you want to check it out. But if you like to do it via the GUI, then you could go to the uh, Oracle VirtualBox Manager and open the Virtual Media Manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this Windows 10 Pro VM here, and that's the disk for it, and that's the one we're going to convert. So in the command line video, I mentioned that when you do this, you go to Copy, and then you just give it a name. So we'll stick with Copy, and you pick VMDK. But what it does, rather than change the extension to, let me find a VMware one here, to VMDK, it leaves it as VDI, and that makes you think, oh, well, then you can't, it's not working, or it's just making it a VDI file, so I'm not sure why it doesn't change the extension, but you could change it manually and make it work, so I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to name it Windows 10 Pro Copy. We're going to make it VMDK from the list here. Keep it dynamically allocated. We're going to keep it uh, one size rather than split it into two gigabyte individual files. Click on Copy. Okay, so this will take a minute, so we'll pause the video while that's running. All right, so the clone is complete. Let's see what we got here. So like I said, we named it underscore copy and it put VDI at the end for whatever reason instead of changing it to VMDK. So all we got to do is rename it. Okay, so now we got our VMDK file. So now we can go into VMware Workstation, do a new VM. We'll do a custom. Looks good. Uh, install operating system later because we don't need one, so no need to mount the Windows ISO. ISO. Windows, Windows 10 on later, because it's Windows 10 VM. We'll call this uh, cloned. UEFI. I'll show you why that will be a problem in a second. That's good. Give it a little more RAM. And that's fine. That's good. NVMe is good. Okay, here's where we're going to get attached to the virtual hard disk, but before I do that, I want to take it out of here. I'll just put it here for now, just to put it in the VMware folder. Okay, so now we have our new virtual, or actually new VMware Workstation VM with our converted VirtualBox disk file attached. So we're going to convert it to the newer format, 16.2 in this case. Okay, customize hardware if we needed to, but we're going to be good to go on that. Click on Finish. Okay, so here's our cloned VM, so let's go ahead and start it up and see what happens here. Don't worry about this, you won't get this unless you're using Hyper-V. Okay, so it's not finding anything to boot off of, so it's trying to boot from the network, so that's going to fail there. So what we got to do is shut it down or just turn it off. Okay, and then go back to the settings. Options advanced and change it from UEFI to BIOS so this might not be the fix all the time but it tends to be the fix in this situation click OK and we'll start it up again okay there's our Windows logo login screen here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we got our desktop and it's found the network connection. It's also 
configuring some new hardware since it's even though it's an old VM, it's just it's new to this uh, virtual hardware. Okay, so it looks like we're good to go. So once again, just go into your uh, VirtualBox Manager, and then from File and Virtual Media Manager, then you could just pick your VDF file, do a copy, pick VMDK, name it, and then a uh, once you're done, go to your Windows Explorer, change the extension to, from VDI to VMDK, and then import it into your VirtualBox machine, and then hopefully you're good to go. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention here, you'll notice um, after you do a, your conversion, you'll have this, uh, you'll have your file here with the exclamation point because it's been renamed and it's not really part of this media manager anymore, so what you could do is just remove it from there, and so it'll take it from the... Uh, out of the list of images there, so you don't have that error there. And since it's not not in here anymore with your uh, VirtualBox disk files, okay? All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.